Best scene, waiting to crumble. Interior, Rob's room, day. Rob is wearing a bathrobe, drying what's left of his hair with a towel. A knock is heard. Rob goes to the door and opens it, revealing Bobby and Irene. Irene is holding a Twinkie with a very large lit candle stuck in it. Happy birthday! Well, you baked me a cake, sort of. Well, you lit a candle for me. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday. Irene awkwardly leans over and kisses Rob on the cheek. Bobby seems unsure what to do, whether to shake Rob's hand or kiss him. He begins to reach out his hand, then changes his mind and leans forward to kiss his dad, thinks better of it, and reaches out his hand again. Not knowing which is best, he does nothing. Irene hands the Twinkie to Rob. You shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. We meant to stop on the way and get you a cake, but there were no stores and it was so late and we didn't want to get lost and... You forgot it was my birthday. Oh, no, Dad. We didn't forget. You mean this was what you planned? Bobby and Irene look at each other, embarrassed. It's all right, really. Come in. I'm glad to see you. I have news. Bobby and Irene enter and sit on a small love seat. Rob sits on a chair in front of them, placing the Twinkie between the still-burning candle on the coffee table between them. So, Dad, what's the news? This may come as a shock, but, well, I guess I might as well just come right out and say it. I've made a friend since I've been here. We know. We met him down by the lake. Everybody needs a buddy. How about women? Men and women? I bet they're all chasing an eligible bachelor like you. Only one is chasing me, but don't <laughs> worry, she won't catch me. Bobby and Irene both laugh. There is a knock at the door. The laughter stops as Rob walks to the door and opens it, revealing Stu and Victoria. Stu, I'm glad you're here. So am I. Finally. Can I be? What? They're fixing some plumbing problem and I can't use my toilet. <laughs> I really need to be. Sure. You know where it is. The rooms are exactly alike, only with different furniture and drapes. Which? Looking at drapes. Actually, I think the drapes are the same too. Stu hurriedly wheels to the bathroom door. He then stands, and holding the doorknob, he enters the bathroom, closing the door behind him. He can walk? Yes, but it hurts when he does. So, Dad, what's, what's the big news? I already told you. Bobby looks confused. Dad, now, don't make us worry about your mind. You, you didn't tell us any news. Dad, are you feeling all right? Let's wait for Stu. Rob leans over to blow out the candle. Wait, stop. Don't do it. Everyone freezes. The candle is still burning. You didn't make a wish. Rob looks at Victoria for a long moment. She smiles. He looks toward the bathroom door, smiles slightly, closes his eyes, and makes a silent wish. He opens his eyes and blows out the candle. Victoria claps. Irene and Bobby join in. The door opens and Stu stands in the doorway. No applause necessary. My prostate isn't the size of a baseball yet. I can still urinate almost completely at will. Rob laughs heartily, the others awkwardly. Stu gets in his wheelchair and rolls up beside Rob. Sit down, Vicky. Victoria smiles and looks around. There are no other chairs in the small sitting area, so she walks to the sofa. An empty space is between Bobby and Irene. There is very little space between the coffee table and the sofa. Victoria makes her way past Bobby to the empty space, speaking as she does. Excuse me, please. Bobby, move over and let Victoria sit down. Bobby tries to move over as Victoria sits. She lands halfway in his lap, halfway on the sofa. Irene tries to move to give Victoria more room, as does Bobby. Victoria finally gets situated on the crowded love seat between Bobby and Irene. That went well, don't you think? Definitely. Dad, now what is this news you keep talking about? Yes, Dad. What's so important? Rob looks at Stu, then turns to the sofa before speaking. Kids, Vicky. May I call you Vicky? You know how upset I was moving into this place. Dad, we're sorry, but you know you couldn't live alone with your bad heart. It's all right, Irene. It was a difficult decision, and we made it together. Well, sort of together. You agreed, Dad, remember? Yes, yes. You made the decision, and I agreed rather than be declared legally incompetent. None of that matters now. It's worked out well. I have some good news, but I know it may be difficult for you. I'm glad Stu and Victoria are here. It's only appropriate. Rob, wait. You want Victoria to leave? Stu thinks for a minute. Everyone watches as he looks at Victoria, then at Rob, then at Victoria again. No, you're right. It's time. How many years we got left anyway? Dad, don't talk that way. You have lots and lots of years left. Why, you're only... Well, you've still got lots... Well, some 
years left. A few, for sure. That's right. You and my dad could live to be a hundred. Or more. Lots of people live to be over a hundred. I read about them every day. The TV is full of them. Why, they're everywhere. I told you I've made a good friend since I've been here, Stu. Everyone smiles and looks at Stu. He manages a feeble smile. Stu has brightened my life. He makes my life worth living again. I am very grateful and honored to know him, and I want you all to know how happy I am to call him my friend, someone special I care for very much. Rob takes Stu's hand in his. They look in each other's eyes, smiling. Stu becomes misty-eyed. Bobby's smile fades, as does Irene's. Victoria continues smiling. This is just so sweet, isn't it? Victoria continues to smile. Stu and Rob turn and look at the three on the sofa. Well, what do you have to say? Big news, huh? Dad, I'm a little confused. Yeah, what exactly are you trying to say? Just so sweet. Makes me want to cry. You want me to spell it out? Both Irene and Bobby slowly nod in unison. Victoria still smiles, oblivious. Rob starts to speak, but Stu stops him. They continue holding hands, gripping tighter now. We're lovers. Victoria's smile fades. The three sit, staring unbelievingly at Rob and Stu, who now both smile, still holding hands. I told you he had dementia. He doesn't have dementia. Of course he does. Why else would he say such a ridiculous thing? He doesn't have dementia. What then? He's a fag? That's not a nice word, Bobby. My father's not a fag. He has dementia. This is all your fault, you pervert. Bobby. Sit down, Rob. This is hard on them. Be patient. Sit down, Bobby. Rob and Bobby both sit. There is another awkward silence. What about Mom? Your mother is dead. He's hanging in there thanks to the miracle of modern medicine, but your mother's long dead and gone. Victoria bursts into tears and runs into the bathroom, slamming the door behind her. We can hear her sobbing. You disgust me, both of you. Bobby gets up and storms at the front door. I, I just, just want to say, excuse me. Irene rises and calmly goes out the front door, leaving Rob and Stu alone. They now let go of each other's hands, not looking at each other. Victoria's sobs are still heard. That went well, don't you think? <laughs>